So in our previous discussion, we talked about the definitions of endothermic versus exothermic. This brings us to a wonderful problem from our problem set. I want you to consider the following diagram in which the reactants are at a lower energy level than the products. And then answer these questions. Does this diagram represent an increase or decrease in the internal energy of the system? As we look at it, we can see that going from reactants to products, the products are at a higher energy level than the reactants. Thus, the internal energy, as indicated here on the y-axis, has increased. What sign is given to delta E for this process? Once again, in order to move reactants, my system, from a lower energy level to a higher energy level, they have to have absorbed energy from the surroundings. Thus, we would say that delta E is positive because there's been a positive net deposit into the system's energy bank account by the surroundings. And our last question, if there is no work associated with this process, is it exothermic or endothermic? Once again, keeping in mind that this process is one in which the surroundings are putting energy into the system. If that energy were solely being transferred as heat rather than work, then we could see that clearly the system is going to have to absorb heat from the surroundings. That represents a positive delta Q and is an endothermic process. Remember, endothermic processes, ones in which the system is absorbing heat from its surroundings, have a positive delta Q. And exothermic processes, ones in which the system gives off heat to its surroundings, have a negative delta Q. So here's another question. Calculate delta E and determine whether the process is endothermic or exothermic for the following cases. A, heat equals 0.763 kilojoules and work equals negative 840 joules. And B, a system releases 66.1 kilojoules of heat to its surroundings while the surroundings do 44 kilojoules of work on the system. Let's begin by looking at part A. How in the world do we determine delta E for that? Well, we have to remember the equation I shared with you earlier that delta E equals heat plus work. In a very straightforward manner in part A, we've been given the value of heat and the value of work. The value of heat is 0.763 kilojoules, and the value of work is negative 0.840 kilojoules. Note that I've converted the original value for work we were given, negative 840 joules, into kilojoules so that my units match for both heat and work as I add them together. I throw this into my calculator and discover that the overall delta E for this process is negative 0.077 kilojoules. It also asks us to determine whether it's endothermic or exothermic. Now keep in mind this. The answer to this question only depends on the value of Q. If Q is positive, then it's endothermic. If it's negative, then it's exothermic. What in the world was Q? The original value given me was positive 0.763 kilojoules. Thus, this process is endothermic. Let's take a look at question B. How in the world do we do it? Well, once again, we use the previous equation. Delta E equals heat plus work. The tricky thing about this is determining the signs. Is heat positive or negative, and is work positive or negative? It tells us in this question that a system releases 66.1 kilojoules of heat to its surroundings. We imagine, once again, our system having 66.1 kilojoules inside its bank account and releasing those 66.1 kilojoules to its surroundings. Does that represent losing energy or gaining energy? It of course represents losing energy. Thus that heat value is negative and a negative value of heat is exothermic. Now, it tells us further that the surroundings do 44 kilojoules of work on the system. So does that mean W is positive or negative? Well, we imagine the surroundings depositing 44 kilojoules of work into the system's energy bank account. That is a deposit, thus it is positive. We have our values for Q and W. We now throw them into the equation and determine that the final answer is negative 22.1 kilojoules. Here's another example that I won't read to you or do for you, but will let you consider an attempt on your own. We're now going to talk about something called state functions. In order to understand this, I'm going to use a metaphor with you called the traveling example. I want you to pretend 
that you've been doing some traveling, and I come up with you and ask you, what state are you in? Let's pretend, hypothetically, that you answer, I'm in Virginia. Captain John Carter, Virginia. Now when I have asked you that question, does your answer in any way depend upon how you got to Virginia? No, it doesn't. Because my question only asked you to tell me what state you're currently in. Now let's suppose that you have a friend who also traveled to the same location that you're at in Virginia, but did so by a completely different route. When I ask your friend what state he or she is in, what is the answer? It's exactly the same. Does the answer depend at all upon how your friend got there? Absolutely not. According to the question that I've asked, it only depends on what final state each of you is in, which in this example is the same. Now as it turns out, there are certain thermodynamic properties that are also called state functions. State functions, as I'll reiterate momentarily, are limited completely to the current physical state of the substance in question and do not depend in any way upon how the substance got to that state. So all systems, as it turns out, have some amount of internal energy. And that energy will be the same for two different systems that have the same amount of substance, the same type of substance, and the same temperature. For instance, if I have two cups that each contain 50 grams of water at 25 degrees Celsius, then they both have the same exact amount of internal energy. It doesn't matter how they each got there. So in one example, we could imagine me beginning with a cup containing 50 grams of water that started at 100 degrees Celsius and cooled to eventually arrive at 25 degrees Celsius. Separately, we could imagine having a second cup that also contains 50 grams of water that started at 0 degrees Celsius but was heated gradually to arrive at the exact same temperature as the former cup at 25 degrees Celsius. Are both of those two cups in the exact same final state? Yes, they are. Does the fact that each of those cups started from different origins matter in any way relative to their final state? No, it does not. Both of these cups, because they contain the same mass of the same substance at the same temperature, are in the exact same state. And the fact that they both came from different starting points is completely irrelevant in terms of what their current internal energy or state is. Thus we can see that internal energy is an example of a state function, a property that is determined and dependent by a system's current condition or state. State functions values depend only on the present state of the system and not on the path taken to reach that state. Now that's all we're going to say about state functions, but I want you to keep it in the back of your mind because we will discuss it further on in this chapter as well as in later chapters this semester. Let's now turn to a different subject, enthalpy. Enthalpy, abbreviated as H, is a way of reporting a system's total energy according to the following equation. Enthalpy equals E plus P times V, where E equals internal energy, P equals pressure, and V equals the volume of a system. Now remember earlier how I mentioned that heat is not abbreviated using the letter H, but the letter Q, and I promised you I'd explain why. The reason is because we use the letter H for enthalpy, and in order to avoid confusion, we use the letter Q for heat. You might ask, why in the world didn't we use the letter E for enthalpy? Well, the reason is because the letter E is reserved for energy, which is something else. <laughs> but there's still more to be said about enthalpy. The change in enthalpy for a reaction is called delta H. It is defined mathematically as being delta H, the total change in enthalpy for a system is equal to the final enthalpy minus the initial enthalpy. Or it can also be expressed as delta H equals the enthalpy of the products minus the enthalpy of reactants. Now note, just as we've seen with delta Q, a negative delta H signifies an exothermic reaction while a positive delta H an endothermic reaction. We'll now leave this subject momentarily, but we'll get back to it later on in the chapter. Let's turn now to discussing gas systems. Gas systems, as it turns out, can do work on their surroundings. Can you think of an example? If you said the controlled explosions in a combustion engine, you were right. If you said something else, I have no way of knowing. So let's just assume you're right in any case. Here's a cool picture that shows that. 
Supposing we have a chemical reaction or physical process inside a closed vessel that produces gas as that process is moved forward. If this vessel is closed, then as that gas expands, it can actually push a piston up. That piston could in turn be attached to a crankshaft or to some other mechanism that could then allow us to do work. So do gas systems do work as gas molecules are created and expand? Yes, they do. Now work that's done in a gas system is called pressure volume work and is defined mathematically as W work, in this case pressure volume work, equals negative P times delta V, where P equals pressure and change in volume delta V is equal to V final minus V initial. Now because delta E equals Q plus W, which we talked about in an earlier slide, and enthalpy equals energy plus pressure times volume, talked about in an earlier slide, and pressure volume work equals negative P times delta V, which we just barely talked about, delta H at constant pressure can be rewritten in various forms shown here. Now I realize this is many equations I've thrown at you to learn. Please rest assured that on the exam and problem sets, I will give you all the equations that you need and will not require you to memorize them. This lets us finish with a final example. A gas is confined to a cylinder under constant atmospheric pressure. When it undergoes a particular chemical reaction, it absorbs 824 joules of heat from its surroundings and has 0.65 kilojoules of pressure volume work done on it by its surroundings. What are the values of delta H and delta E for this process? Let's go ahead and do this problem together. As shown in the problem, the work done on this system by its surroundings is 0.65 kilojoules, and the heat transferred to the system by its surroundings is 0.824 kilojoules. Note that I've converted 824 joules into 0.824 kilojoules here. So what in the world is the total change in enthalpy, delta H? Well, we learned from one of the equations on the previous slide that for a constant pressure system, delta H equals Q which equals 0.824 kilojoules. Thus, we've now answered that question. Well, what about delta E? We remember that delta E equals Q plus W. We throw in these numbers for those two values, and we end up discovering that delta E equals 1.47 kilojoules. That brings us to the end of this first half of our discussion on Chapter 5's coverage of thermodynamics. Please stay tuned as we continue covering this subject with further lecture videos to be posted shortly. Until then, have an enjoyable rest of your day.